get too close, this thing could stop. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you very much. We are so proud to have such a wonderful crowd here in Richmond. We have a distinguished group that's <coughs> getting off here. <coughs> Miss Martha Bell Conway. I'm Luther Hodges, a Democrat from North Carolina. Miss Conway, Mrs. Junie Bradshaw, Mrs. Junie Bradshaw, Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Williams, Jr., Mr. Fergus McCree, Mr. Edward C. Mater, Mr. Scott Anderson, Mr. B.A. Cephas, Mrs. Claude Whitley, Mr. Ralph Elmore, Mr. and Mrs. John Pershing, Mr. Malcolm Jameson, Reverend Constantine in Dombalis, Mrs. George Freeman, Mrs. Angus McCauley, Mr. Lewis Reynolds. We've had uh, a very distinguished Virginian on here with us, Mr. Sidney Callum, the state chairman of the Johnson Humphrey Bird campaign in Virginia, who has been with us ever since we left Alexandria, and I want him to say just a word as he leaves. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to tell you that it, the sun is shining bright and it's clear all over Virginia, and Virginia is going for Johnson come November the 4th, third. The mayor? Mayor Crow? Hello. Hello. Mayor Crow? I'm going to put you on right now. I want to present to this uh, great group of people here your distinguished mayor, Mayor Crow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor and a privilege to welcome the First Lady of our country to our city of Richmond, Virginia. She has come to Richmond. We are delighted that she has come. And when she comes onto this platform, she will see that many, many people of Richmond have come to her. We do regret very much that time will not permit her to see the many beauties and charms and to partake of the hospitality of our city and also to visit the shrines of our city so important in American history and in American heritage. But we do welcome her. We hope for future visits when she will have the leisure to spend time with us. It is a very great pleasure to appear here and to officially welcome her to the city of Richmond. Thank you. May I present now Mrs. Vaughn Geary and then your Congressman Vaughn Geary. <laughs> Friends, it does my heart good to see so many early birds out this morning to greet Lady Bird and Linda Bird as they arise and arrive in Richmond. It is a privilege and honor to me to welcome the First Lady uh, to the Third Congressional District of Virginia. You know, we worried all last week it was raining so, but I felt all along 
that the sun would shine on the first lady in Dixie. It is my very pleasant duty now to present to you, because I do not have the opportunity or uh, the time uh, to introduce him, uh, your great Lieutenant Governor Mills Godwin and Mrs. Godwin. Mr. Congressman, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen, all of us aboard the Lady Bird special train today are glad in our capital city to welcome aboard the Chief Executive of Virginia and Mrs. Harrison. We have had a delightful trip down from Alexandria when the President departed from the train after speaking to an enormous crowd there. We stopped at Fredericksburg and again at Ashland. And we are in Richmond now to greet you. And I am happy to present the distinguished Chief Executive of the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Honorable Albertus S. Harrison and Mrs. Harrison. Governor Godwin, Mr. Secretary, Mrs. Johnson, my fellow Virginians, <clears throat> the people of Virginia and of Richmond are possessed of many virtues. Not the least is their warmth, their graciousness, and their hospitality. This morning we are assembled in the capital city to accord a welcome to one who in her own right is richly entitled to be acclaimed. Virginia reveres her great men of history, the Jeffersons, Washingtons, Henrys, Randolphs, Lees, Birds, and countless others. But implicit always in the mention of their names is a certain knowledge that none would have achieved greatness but for the loyalty, the devotion, and the understanding of some woman who walked through life by their side. So the people of Virginia can understand and do applaud the unselfish motives and sincere desires of a wife to help and her willingness thereby to identify herself with the hopes and the dreams and the aspirations of her husband. If there is any state that can be associated with the Democratic Party, historically and philosophically, that state is Virginia. Here in Virginia, at Jamestown, Williamsburg, and Yorktown, from the hearts and minds of our earlier patriots, evolved the rare and precious system of government which we now enjoy. Thomas Jefferson, the patron saint of the Democratic Party, was one of many Virginians whose contributions are properly recorded in history as beyond measure and as beyond price. Our people are mindful of the constructive programs which the Democratic Party has provided and which have been an important factor in this nation becoming and remaining the great and the good and the powerful nation that it is. And we could recite a many major contributions of the party. The Federal Reserve System, fathered by Carter Glass of Virginia. The Federal Housing Administration, the Homeowners Loan Corporation, the GI Bill, and other programs which have enabled Virginia to remain a nation of homeowners and freeholders. The various farm programs, the strong and timely moves that lifted this country from the depths of the Depression in the 30s and restored faith and confidence to the people in themselves. The national leadership that brought us through two ghastly wars. The leadership that has stemmed the tide of communism in many areas of the globe. The inspiration that conceived the Berlin Airlift. And these are but typical of the many things. My friends, the Democratic Party is not a regional party. And it is not a party of a group of states. It's a national party. And it needs the participation and support of people in every state. And if it is to remain a national party and a responsible party, it must be strong enough and resilient enough to retain the membership of loyal Americans of diverse views. And in the past, the two great national parties have contained men and women of varying views and backgrounds and programs. And they have remained strong and virile by reason of that fact. And today the country needs a continued leadership and constructive thought of those whom Virginia Democrats are supporting for the House of Representatives and the United States Senate. And we need the opportunity of having our voices heard in the councils of the party and at the White House. 
And in President Johnson, we have one whom we have known and with whom we have worked for many years in the atmosphere of friendliness and understanding. And his re-election will be our best assurance of continued open lines of communication on problems of mutual concern and matters of national import. President Johnson is a man who assumed office under the most difficult and the most tragic of circumstances. He picked up the reins quickly and decisively with no vacillation and without a moment of disruption. Our enemies and our would-be enemies knew at once that this nation had at the helm a man knew what had to be done and was prepared to make promptly any necessary decisions. I believe that we can say that as a result not one of those opposed to our system moved to exploit our sudden change of leadership. It is our pleasure this morning to welcome the President's charming daughter, Linda, and the delightful First Lady of the Land, Mrs. Johnson. We trust that the hospitality of Virginia will be self-evident even during their hurried visit, and that we may have the pleasure of their company on future and more leisurely occasions. It is now my own personal privilege as the governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia to present to you the first lady of the land, Mrs. Lyndon B. Johnson. Governor Harrison, friends, thank you, Governor Harrison, for that wonderful introduction. And you know, I think we ought to stop a minute and wish a happy birthday to Mrs. Harrison. <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> I've had a delightful morning traveling over the lovely autumn Virginia countryside in company with some of the great citizens of this state. Lieutenant Governor Godwin and Mrs. Godwin, Congressman Ms. Vaughn Gary, Mr. Sidney Kellams. As I rode along and looked out the window, it's easy to see why Virginians love this land so much. To me, Virginia means beautiful rolling country, exquisite gardens, and love of family. Everybody's family, somebody's got uh, an ancestor that uh, came from Virginia. For us, uh, Leonard Barnett, one of, my, one of my husband's ancestors, came from um, uh, Kent, Kent, New Kent County, which I think sort of close to here, uh, and one of mine from Charlotte County. I can understand why the Virginia mother told her son never to volunteer the information that her husband, that her son was a Virginian. She said, your friends know it, and you don't want to embarrass others not so fortunate. Here in Virginia, and particularly in Richmond, there are hundreds of historic reminders of our country's proud beginnings, along with hospitality that is legendary. Over a hundred years ago, William Makepeace Thackeray called Richmond the merriest and most picturesque place in America. I am personally delighted that Richmond's hospitality extends to women in public life and that you've had a councilwoman whose ability is such that she was formerly served as your mayor, Mrs. Eleanor Shepard. And today I met uh, Mrs. Martha Conway, who is the secretary of the Commonwealth. Richmond is truly a barometer of the new South, as well as the old, with abundant evidence of our country's prosperous presence and promising future. Virginians earn $205 per capita more now than they did in 1960. That testifies to the commercial and industrial growth of this area. I would be remiss if I did not point out that these were democratic years. <laughs> Certainly, it fits with my husband's premise. <laughs> we remember, we remember <laughs> that this region's future 
will be more vitally served by the Democratic Party in the years ahead. My main reason for coming here today was to say to you that to this Democratic candidate for president and his wife, the South is a respected and valued and beloved part of this country. My husband asked me to bring you his greetings. He would like to be here himself, but the massive job of the presidency doesn't stop day by day, and it is what he must put first. So I am coming to visit some of the states I know best, in many of which I spent summer times and vacation times of my childhood. Ten months ago, on a dreadful day that shook our country, our husband, my husband, became our president. Since then, he has tried with all that is in him to keep our country on a steady course of economic prosperity, to face the world with firm strength, and to seek practical ways to help those Americans still in need. There are many things in which we can all take satisfaction. This October is the 44th straight month in which the economy has remained strong. The danger in those once frightening headlines about Panama and Guantanamo and Zanzibar have been reduced by tireless, patient effort. There are problems ahead, and the President promises no easy answers. But his years of working for the people of this country, 12 years in the House of Representatives, 12 in the United States Senate, three in the Vice Presidency, plus what a wife can only describe as a lot of determination, energy, and devotion to his job, these will help solve the problems that face our country. I am proud of his record. I hope you want to continue it. I thank you. And now, and now, I want you to meet our daughter, Linda Bird. <laughs> I've already been cut off before I began. But I want to thank you all for coming out here today. As a young person, I'm particularly glad to see so many young people. Over half the people in the world now are under 25. That means y'all. <laughs> in 15 years, half the people in the United States will be under 25. That means we're all going to have to start working now and not wait for those 15 years. Young people have always worked in their government. Right now we have over 10,000 young people working abroad in the Peace Corps. We had 8,000 young people come to Washington this summer to work in various capacities in government. I hope I can list all your aid between now and November. We are the volunteer generation. And I hope that all of you will be volunteers along with me to work hard on, for the Democratic ticket in your town, in your state, and in your nation. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.